Hello, my name is Diane Schuster. In this video, I'm going to use the local filter property of the file transfer task. And the scenario I'll be dealing with is, let me show you, I have um, some files on my computer, and this could be a local server. And you can see there's a bunch of text files, and I have a couple of subfolders, and each of those has a bunch of text files. So I only want to upload the files that are new since 24 hours ago. And that's why I'm using the local filter. And just so you know, this highest level folder does not have any files that match that criteria, but both of the subfolders each have one file that match the criteria. So let's get started. I'm going to start by defining a variable called file path. So what I'm going to use file path for, it's going to be the full file path for a folder. And I'll start out by setting it to the highest level folder. So now I'm going to use the for each loop container because I'm going to loop through each folder looking for files that match my criteria. So each time through the loop, I'll be processing a different folder. They could be subfolders, they could be just folders anywhere. They don't have to be subfolders of each other. So I'm going to use for each item enumerator, and I need to add one column. And this is where I'm going to be pasting each of the uh, folders that I want to process or look at files in. So let me go get the uh, file path for the first subfolder. And then there's one more, the second subfolder. All right, now I need to map the variables. And of course, I have the file path variable here, and that's all I need to do to set that up. Now I will get the file transfer task, which is right here. Put that in the for each loop container. I'll go into edit it, and here you can see the action. Um, it defaults to send files, and that is what we want to do. We're sending files from a local server to a remote server. And this is where I put, I'm going to set up the connection manager for the local files. And even though these are text files, so they would be flat files, I'm not using the flat file connection manager because that can only point at one file at a time. And the local filter cannot be applied against one file. You have to provide a group of files or a list of files in a folder in order to be able to use that local filter um, property. So I'll use the file connection manager and I will set the usage type to existing folder and then I'm going to browse to find the folder, the highest level folder. And there you can see our two subfolders under there. So that's done. Now we need to set up our local filter. And I have that predefined here. And I'll paste that in. And this is what they call a flee expression, F-L-E-E, -E, for Fast Lightweight Expression Evaluator. And now I'll go set up the connection manager for the remote server, which in my case I'm going to use SharePoint. You could use any of these connection managers. And of course it is online. And I'll go grab the URL for my SharePoint server. Paste that in here. And I need to type in my credentials. And 
I'll test the connection. And it's good. So I'll close that connection manager. And then I need to point at the specific folder where I want the files placed. So that's all we need to do there. Um, you know, you could set overwrite remote if you think there's going to be files there that you don't need anymore. I don't need to uh, change that, so I'll leave it set to false. And I'm done configuring that. Okay, so we need to set up um, an expression to use the variable for our, our local connection manager. So I'm going to go to the properties for this connection manager, for the file connection manager, and I need to change this property to use our file path variable. So I'll go to expressions and I choose that connection string property and then I'll set up the expression to just be the file path variable. We evaluate it and there you can see it's the highest level folder. So one last thing, as I mentioned, the highest level folder does not have any files in it that match the criteria. So the package will fail. And I'm just going to execute it real quickly to show you that. And then I'm going to show you there's a property to handle that situation. So it will not fail. And it failed. Local filter source files doesn't contain file path. And now we'll go look and see that no files got uploaded. Okay, so now we will go back to our package and I'll show you how to fix that. So we're going to edit the properties of the file transfer task. I right mouse click on the task and I go to properties and then you want to find the no files fail property and I'll set that to false. So in other words if it doesn't have any find any files that match the criteria it will not fail. That won't be the reason why it will fail. If it fails, it's for some other reason. So let me save the package and execute it again. And it succeeded this time. So let's go take a look at the folder in SharePoint. I have to refresh it. And there you can see we got the two files from the two subfolders. And before I wrap this up, I just want to show you a couple things. So this is the file transfer task documentation page on Cozy Rock's website. And uh, here's the description of the local filter property. And here you can see it says it uses a flea expression. And here are the elements that you can use in those expressions. And then here is another page, the common API page on the Cozy Rock website. And this provides some additional information that you might find useful. Here you can see how to follow us on social media. And thank you for watching.